above freezing. Hey guys, welcome back to Ranger Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew, and what I have for you today is basic cold weather survival. Stand by. Basic cold weather survival. We're focused on three principles for cold weather survival training. Thermoregulation, hydration, and protection. Arguably, these principles cut across all survival scenarios in all climates and environments, but especially in a cold weather environment, they're gonna change our priority and how we focus on our seven priorities of survival in a cold weather climate. To break it down in its most simplest form, all we're trying to do is stay warm and protect ourselves from the elements long enough to get rescued. basic cold weather survival kit. We've got all the usual suspects to affect our seven priorities of survival. Fire, water, food, shelter, land navigation, medical aid, and signaling, plus a few other tools with us. Now basic doesn't refer to the kit itself. As you see, there's a lot of items here. Basic refers to the experience and knowledge level of the individual in a basic cold weather survival training event. As we progress from basic level to more advanced techniques, we remove a lot of these items and maybe go with larger tools, a larger ax, a larger saw, maybe some snowshoes if there's a lot of snow on the ground. And the student is forced to focus on creating things from the landscape to affect survival given the lessons learned at a basic winter or cold weather survival training course, and then use those lessons and creativity and knowledge level and skill to affect survival and recreate a lot of these different things from the landscape and with the minimal tools that they have with them. So now with any kit, big fan of putting things in a bush pot, Morse Kahansky style, we can definitely fit a lot into a bush pot. All of this, minus the knife and the hatchet, fit into our bush pot. But a couple of things we're gonna note here. We have everything, like I said, for the seven priorities of survival, but food in a cold weather environment, going to the field or to a training event, bringing high calorie food like chocolate, high calorie energy bars, hot cocoa, tea, and then even coffee can make the difference in a cold weather environment. And the food is meant to reinforce the psychological effects of having something warm to eat and drink in a cold weather environment and how good that feels once we have those things. Once these things are taken away, we have to recreate those. The infamous Ranger lighter. Now, this Ranger lighter, I call it a Ranger lighter because I created it in Ranger school so it stopped losing these two small things that were in my pockets. But I was a winter Ranger and so I had a lighter and if it's cold outside, it's not gonna work very well, especially in high winds. But these things taped together, high vis with hidden tinder in the cap of the chapstick is just another way to start fire even if we can't get a flame out of the lighter itself and all we have is just the spark. We can get a fire going, but this is similar or akin to an Arctic necklace. Basically the same thing, we would just wear it around our necks to keep warm. We can take this and put it in our pocket to keep it warm. All items in our kit are high visibility. High visibility in case we drop these in the snow and we're looking around for them, we can find our match case, we can find our bandana, we can find our cordage, our saw, we can find our knife if we drop it. We can find all these things if we drop them in the snow or in a cold weather environment and find them quickly enough. That way we're not searching through the snow and wasting time trying to find these items or we're not trying to search for something that's already lost and we're never gonna get back. So high visibility items for our kit Now with a kit as small as this, the items we take out once we're in that survival training event or we're in that scenario, we take all the items out of our kit and grab a few of those items and distribute them in our clothing. 
That way, in the event we walk away from our kit and we can't get back to it, or we drop our jacket for whatever reason, we're not left without all of the items. We have a few items, especially fire lighting and signaling items on us to get a fire going and continue to signal for rescue. So we're not left without all of our kits. So just everything else we don't use goes in our pot bag to save for later. Thermal regulation is the number one principle for basic cold weather survival. Thermal regulation, simply put, is just maintaining our core body temperature of 98.6 degrees. Any lower than that, and we could have a cold weather injury. Any higher than that, we could have a hot weather injury. Both can happen in cold weather environments, which is why it's important to understand our first protection against the cold, clothing. Now, don't you feel warmer? Now, clothes alone are not enough to keep us warm in a cold weather environment. We need to have a way to generate body heat, either through exercise or consuming foods. We need to have some sort of radiant heat source to dry out and warm up next to, like a fire. And then we need to have a shelter to protect us through the night and contain as much body heat inside that shelter as possible to stay warm. However, clothing is where we're going to start, and there's a simple acronym we can use to remember how to dress in a cold weather environment, and that is COLD. Now the C stands for clean. Keep your clothes clean, that way they last longer. O stands for overheating. We want to avoid overheating in our clothes. Believe it or not, even in a cold weather environment, we can succumb to a heat injury wearing too many clothes and working too hard and not dressing down when we start to get hot. People can have hot weather injuries in cold environments very easily. L stands for loose and layered. We want to dress in a lot of different layers and we want them to be loose. That way we create a lot of dead airspace to trap our body's heat to help keep us warm. And then finally D, dry. We want to keep these clothes as dry as possible, avoid sweating in them, and then don't fall in the drink getting these clothes wet, especially if we don't have a fire yet to dry out with. We want to keep our clothes as dry as possible so they work and keep us warm.
fire is going to be a part of thermoregulation. This is a thing that we can come back to, get radiant heat, dry out our clothing, warm up next to, and stay warm throughout the night. The intent behind a TP fire is to keep it burning and we can walk away from this while the fire eats and continues to move up to larger and larger sections of material. At that point, we have a sustainable fire that we can come back to, add fuel to if we need to, or remove fuel to control that fire, but we don't have to constantly sit here and feed this fire. Now we have a variety of fire lighting items as part of our basic kit. We've got a ferro rod, matches, we have a lighter, and then we have tinder that we brought with us. So if we don't have a striker or our matches are compromised, we can use that little ferrule at the bottom of that match safe with some sort of striker, like our multi-tool, and crush up those match heads to get a fire going. The more you know.
Our second priority of cold weather survival is hydration. In that principle, we can throw food because we need water to be able to digest food. It takes more water to digest proteins as opposed to carbohydrates and fats. So having a meal like this with noodles and the soup is easier for us to digest. Plus, we get a little bit of hydration from the soup by drinking the soup to help aid in the digestion process of the noodles. But you saw we have a pot, go down to the creek, fill up on water, bring it back here, bring it to a rolling boil, and that water is safe to consume, and then we made our meal out of it. So it's very simple. Hydration and food together is a huge psychological morale boost, but then provides the necessary energy to keep us going because we're burning a lot of calories out here, making shelter, building a fire, gathering resources, and then trying to keep our bodies warm at the same time in a cold environment. So principle number two, hydration. Now this is a very basic emergency shelter. We're just gonna use a little bit of physics. The heat from that candle reflected off the mylar to warm our bodies a little bit. Not very easy to do with a cheap mylar blanket like this, but we can lean up against a tree, put the candle on a piece of bark, and then light that, wrap the blanket up and over that flame, and we should start to feel warm here pretty soon. All right now, if you remember earlier, we picked up this old pickle jar and put holes in the cap. Now we're gonna use the same principles with our Mylar space blanket and our candle that we used for that emergency shelter where we're just sitting up against a tree trying to get warm fast. We're gonna line the inside of our shelter with our Mylar space blanket up top above us and then taking this candle, we're just gonna put it inside, <laughs> it broke, inside of our pickle jar and light it and then put the cap on to act as a heater inside the shelter and help protect the shelter from the flame itself so we don't accidentally knock this over and catch our shelter on fire. So we've got our lamp, or our makeshift lamp, and then our mylar, and that should keep us warm throughout the night. All right, so we're in the shelter. Third principle of cold weather survival, protection. Anything to protect us from the elements, protect us from the wind, precipitation, the cold, something to get out of the elements, try to trap as much warm air as possible, and stay warm and dry throughout the night and get a good night's sleep. So we've added onto our shelter from a previous video, made a new wall. There are some minor gaps, as you can see but the breeze isn't too bad it's really just coming through this doorway right here so we're just going to plug that up tonight before going to bed we've got our mylar blanket it acts as a windbreak and a reflector and then we've got the candle working really well in that old pickle jar you can see it's not affected by the breeze at all and it can provide some warmth throughout the night all the grass is swept away to make sure we don't catch anything on fire i actually had the pickle jar break when i put the candle in but this actually works a lot better because we just lift the whole jar up and over and then light the candle, put it all back on top because the bottom of the jar is now gone. But this works just fine. Now, prior to going to bed, 
We're going to dry out our socks, get one more hot drink, and then use the latrine so we don't have to get up in the middle of the night. And then climb into our bed, plug up the doorway here with grass, and then we should be good to go for the rest of the night. filled it up at the creek with water and we're going to use it to make a warming bottle or a little hot water bottle tonight that we can just put underneath our armpits or between our legs while we're inside the shelter just have a, another improvised warmer inside the shelter for tonight. Now, not the warmest thing in the world, but it is better than being out in the wind. So, I think I'm just gonna let the candle do its thing with the mylar, grab my warm bottle of water, and just climb in and try to get a little bit of sleep, and I'll see you guys in the morning. sitting right about 35 36 degrees 
It's in the lower teens or single digits this morning outside. So about a 20 degree difference or so is good, especially out here in the Great Plains. Stayed warm through the night, candle, mylar, debris bed, shelter, and then our hot water bottle, along with all our clothing, doing a little bit of exercise every now and then to warm up a little bit. But 35, 36 degrees inside versus single digits outside, I'll take that every time. One thing I like to bring out in cold weather climates is hot drinks. And today I have a very special hot drink. We're gonna make as close to authentic chai as possible. I'm gonna put that cup in the fire and let it boil. Now the trick to this is just let the water and milk warm up with the coals that we have. We don't want to boil it, we just want to simmer it. Don't let the milk froth or bubble over the pot. We're just warming everything up. We've got a bunch of spices and sugar in our black tea. Now we add the spice and sugar first. We've got cloves, ginger, cardamom, cinnamon and ground nutmeg all of its ground so i'm not really worried about getting big chunks in here but we're going to add just a pinch of all these spices to our cup along with our sugar stir for a few minutes and then we'll add our tea last let's get a pinch of cloves ginger cardamom cinnamon a little bit of nutmeg Add our sugar, lots of sugar. Continue stirring. Let we'll those spices incorporate. You can already smell it, smells great. Just have Indonesian black tea with lavender. And get a big spoonful of that tea, put it right in. Oh, yeah. Now we stir. Put our lid on and let it simmer for a while. Once we're done, just pull it off the fire, set it to let it cool. A lot of the tea is going to fall to the bottom of our pot as this cools down a little bit and then we'll be able to drink it. Helpful tip, we don't want to drink a mouthful of tea leaves, but as this cools, we can take our spoon and just 
tap the side. And as the liquid cools, that should help force any of the leaves around the pot away from the pot, and then they should sink to the bottom so we can sip and enjoy our chai. Another helpful tip, if you have granola bars for breakfast, put it in your pocket overnight so it's not a frozen brick in the morning. That's amazing. You can taste all the spices in there. It's very aromatic, it's warm, it's soothing. It's great for a nice cold morning like this. Something to warm you up, get you a little bit of energy. Tastes great, it really lifts the spirits along with a nice granola bar with a lot of calories. It's a good morning. Well, we made it through another one. Improved upon our grass shelter here. We had that Mylar space blanket, the candle, the hot water bottle heater, our debris bed, and then the ability to do a little bit of exercise inside of our shelter to keep it above freezing throughout the night. While outside, it was low teens, single digits, very cold. We are able to get a fire going, get some water, stay hydrated, make some food, make some drinks, stay warm, dry out before we got in our shelter for the night. And now we're ready to take advantage of this bright sunshiny day and make our way back toward the farm. But we made it through a winter overnight, basic survival skills to stay warm, stay hydrated, regulate our core body temperature, protect ourselves from the elements. But I hope you guys like this video. If you did like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment in the comment section. I always appreciate your feedback. I wanna thank you guys for everything you do for me, for the channel, for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks. Thank you.